All right, this is the third part of the Fun with Arrays video series. Um, hope you've enjoyed the first two parts. In the first part, we created a real simple array and we compared uh, just a series of strings uh, to the uh, assigning values to an array, a series, an array series. So, in the second one, we actually did it uh, a little more with it. We uh, created some double for looping statements to sort our array and to work with it that way. And then we uh, talked about the arrays.sort method. In this video, we're going to talk about parallel arrays and working with parallel arrays. So let's go ahead and uh, clear our screen here. And uh, let's go ahead and start. Um, now we've got a, a single array here. We've, it's a string array. It has string values. Um, these are all, the, if these are students, we could create a second array. And this would be an integer array that's going to hold grades. Now. Um, we know that uh, when you declare an array, you have to declare the, um, the type, the data type that you're going to have in the uh, array. And so uh, we cannot, uh, we could actually assign a you know, number of values into a string, but if we wanted to add them or average them or do other things with them, um, we would have to do the conversion every single time. So you're better off saving things in an array if that's going to be an integer. You're better off saving them as, them as integers. So uh, let's call this, uh, let's give this uh, 8 also. And so we've created a new um, array called, uh, a new integer array called grade. And it holds 8 values. So just like the strings, we're just um, creating, just like when we created 8 individual uh, uh, variables, integer variables. Here we're creating eight integer variables and they're going to be in an array. So they have a, a contiguity of information. And it's, the nice thing about arrays is they're stored um, on the uh, in the hard drive uh, on your storage or media in uh, contiguous, uh, continuous um, uh, memory space. So when you go to use them, uh, pulling them back and working with them, it's very efficient on your uh, with your computer. Okay, I'm going to paste in some values because I type slowly, and uh, okay, so I pasted in a uh, my grades, and so if we look at this, we've created a uh, integer array. We uh, assigned values to it, very similar to uh, the way we did with the strings. Again, it, this could all be done in one statement. We go, you know, string uh, or integer uh, grade equals, and then we could have all the um, the values in one string. Uh, I'm doing it this way again just to help um, keep in your mind the uh, iteration of the arrays, 0 through 7 in this case. So um, in this case uh, we could match up our index 0. So essentially what we could say is Bob gets a 95, Jenny gets an 88, Charlie gets a 76, uh, Jerry gets a 55, uh, Roberta gets a 98, I need a 93, Sylvia an 84, and Dan gets an 81. So we've uh, assigned grades to the students. And we could print them all out here in a, a nice column order. So let's let's turn off our array sort here for a second here. And uh, we'll talk about that in a, just a moment. But let's go ahead and find out how we can print this out nice and efficiently. Uh, I'm going to use a printf statement here. And printf gives me a little bit of flexibility that I don't have with uh, just a print line. Uh, so I'm going to do a percent %s. Yeah, let's do a minus 15s. And then a uh, just a percent %s. And a new line character here. And so what the printf statement does for us is... Um, It basically is going to take these uh, these variables that I'm passing into it afterwards, and it's going to put it in the place of the s. The s says it's a string. Um, the minus means left align. 15 means use 15 spaces. No matter how long the string is, give it 15 spaces. So basically, it's going to give me a nice square column. And then the second one is saying use a string. Um, uh, this should be a percent s. I must have there. That's going to like that better. Um, it's, going to, it's basically going to treat grade, even though it's an integer, it's going to treat it as a string and print it out. So let's save it and run it. 
and there we go. It's a, this is the column I'm talking about. It's using 15 spaces even if there's you know, only three characters. Uh, so it gives us a nice printout here of the uh, students in this case and their grade. I'm going to take a copy of that and paste that into a notepad and then we're going to keep that down in the corner because we're going to refer to that once in a while. So Bob is 95, Jenny gets an 88 and we have our grades assigned here. Okay, so cool. We've uh, created a parallel array and we've given students which are string values uh, and we've matched it up with a second array which is a completely separate individual array but we've matched it up with the index to a grade and so we uh, can do that. Now let's say that we want to sort these students by alphabetical um, alphabetically and so if I do the sort name I go and save that and um, I run this and it's going to mess me up because I just changed the values. If I go back to what I had, Bob had a 95, he now has an 88. Bob's probably not a happy camper with our sort method. Uh, Charlie still has a 76. Uh, Dan went from an 81 to a 55. So Dan's probably going to be in my office saying, you know, you're messed up. And so, well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and do the erase sort. And let's go ahead and sort our grade. And we save that and run that. And we can see that, uh, you can probably see where this is going already. Uh, Anita went from, what did Anita have? Anita had a, uh, a 93. She's gone to 55 now. She's not happy with our sorting method either. So that's not going to work. So uh, a so point to take into account is that using the arrays.sort method will only sort one array at a time and it really doesn't care. It changes all the indexes, uh, all the values in there and in the indexes, so uh, we can't use the arrays sort method when we're using parallel arrays. So let's go ahead and just take that out because that's not going to work for us. We'll have a bunch of unhappy students. So let's go back to our for statement here and say, you know what? because the indexes are changing, we could actually change the values. So in this case, I could say, okay, um, in our if statement, when I change the string value of name i, I could also change my grade value. So let's create a temp in integer variable up here. And uh, let's do it right under the string. Um, and let's go ahead and right. Okay, so we've added a, a temporary integer variable, and we're going to do the same thing with our grade as what we did with the string. And we're going to use the string, the, um, the name string, to decide which one goes up or down, but we can change our, um, our value in our grade column with it. And really it's going to be the same thing, same um, context here is our string. We're just going to change our integer values. Great. So and so really what we're we're doing is we're going to accomplish uh, the this is going to get us what we need here. So, okay. So not only are we swapping grades in our for statement or uh, names in our for statement, we're going to swap grades too. So let's go ahead and save that. And uh, the logic looks right. Let's go ahead and run it and see how uh, how that works for us. Okay, so let's compare that against our original numbers here. Um, Anita. Anita has 93 now. That's what she's supposed to have. Cool. And Bob has a 95. And Jenny has an 88 yet. And Charlie has a 76. Dan has an 88. Oh, everybody's happy now. Their grades went along with them. So in this case, when we're using a, a um, parallel array, and we want to do sorting, we have to do a little more work to it. And we can use our sort routine here that we created initially 
and that will work where the array sort method will not. Now there's more efficient sort methods. This is not a very efficient sort method, this double loop, this double for loop. Uh, it's efficient enough for a, a few grades. If you have a, thousands of things you're sorting or hundreds of things you're sorting, it's not very efficient. There's a bubble sort, there's n minus one sort, there's all kinds of uh, different sorting methods available that are much more efficient and you know, mathematically you can prove that they're more efficient. Uh, but this is a simple one to write and a simple one to understand. Um, so that's why I use this. Uh, and so we can see how we can run our parallel arrays and we could add more if we wanted to add uh, you know, some, another array of information, another parallel array of information and keep our indexes the same. We could still sort it by name. We could recreate this and sort it by grade. So if we wanted to sort it from highest to lowest grade, at that point we'd change our, we would use our grade for the compari, uh, comparing and we would just change the um, name and, and anything else that's tied to this parallel array with it. So that uh, concludes this video on parallel arrays. I hope that helps you understand it and helps you understand their relationship to each other. Again, this integer array grade could also be uh, declared with a, uh, a, a full statement that uh, it could all be declared in a single statement. Uh, so we could do the, the integer grade thing here and we could uh, we could say here uh, integer grade equals and then we could do a comma uh, 84 and uh, 81. Okay, so this here, uh, uh, declaring the integer array this way is exactly as assigning the values ind individually. Again, this takes a grade 0, grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, grade 4, grade 5, grade 6, grade 7. And um, so uh, there's absolutely no difference between declaring and initially uh, instantiating and assigning values to your array this way as there is with the way we've done it in this uh, uh, by uh, basically declaring our array and um, in instantiating it and then assigning the values individually. Uh, it's all the same. So when you're looking at it in the book, I think the book uses this method an awful lot. Um, it's all the same. It, you can picture it like this if it helps you understand arrays.